Yo, what's up everybody? I'm Zach and welcome back to my channel of Living Mythology. And today, we're going to do something that I should have thought of this on Halloween. And that is, uh, my Ruby Zombie Apocalypse team. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and get into this. Before we get into this video, make sure you guys like, comment, share, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell for more Ruby content. And that shows it means a lot to me that you guys want to see more of my Ruby content on this channel. And pretty much, this is the third time I'm actually doing any zombie apocalypse team. Team I did one for um, the Star Wars. I did one for the anime from both Zach Stark the channel and the Shadow Critics channel. And now I'm doing a, a zombie apocalypse team that involve Ruby. And for those people who saw the community tab of it, I just want to do it just for the hell of it. And I have several, I'm thinking like nine of them that will be fitting for the team. So I hope I'm wrong at that about nine. So this is just my opinion about the choice of who should be in the Ru my Ruby Zombie Apocalypse team. So yeah. I'm not going to waste any time. Let's just go ahead and uh, get into it and let you guys know we're going to start from the bottom to the top because we're going to start the person who, who dies first towards who is the team leader. So yeah, well out of the way, let's just go ahead and get into it. The first person who dies first is definitely Neptune, honestly. I'm going to try to be honest, I did not like Neptune as a character and he's, he's such... He thinks he's a playboy, but later on, he's such a bitch and a coward. And you saw how he is, but when you get to know his backstory, it's kind of fucked up, but at the same time, it's... No, no, it's not fucked up how his older brother did to him. But, but at the same time, you understand why he's reasoning why he's scared of water, but he's a grown-ass teenager, and he's a grow up and faces fear. And, I, yeah, he'll be the first one to die. When it comes to, like, oh, we need to get in the boat, Neptune's like, uh, I don't want to go because water. Yeah, you'll be the first one to die. And, hey, sorry, freaking dog is barking for no goddamn reason. But, and, Neptune will be the first one to die. And, to be honest, he never used his semblance. We never see him use his semblance at all. All he's been using is just his weapon, and it's just useless. His... His semblance could be a lot more useful to take out the zombie, but no, he's afraid of fucking water. So, yeah, he'd be the first one uh, to die. I, I, I'm sorry. If you guys love Neptune, that's fine, but to me, I I just don't. I just really don't. Now, this I just came up out of my mind, and that is the person that cannot be trust, and that is Cinder. Of course, Cinder would not be the person to be trust because she will get everyone killed. Or even worse, she would just stab people in the back so she could take the be the leader because she thinks she knows everything. She knows better. But no one would not trust her all the things she has done. So it wouldn't make a lot more sense for Cinder. And I don't understand people who hate Cinder as a character. I just don't see it. To me, I just love how her character and her story arc development has got good and better until we finally got her backstory that we've been asking for for the longest time until Volume 8, which I am glad, to say the least. And again, sorry about the dog. Freaking barks for no goddamn reason. I might go over there and tell the dog to shut the hell up. But, yeah... I just see Cinder be the one not to be trust as a whole in this team in general. The craftman and repairman is definitely had to be Pietro. I even though Pietro is also a lovable character until they not show him after when Penny quote unquote died what Pietro believes. And if Pietro does shows up in volume nine and he finds out that yeah, your daughter had became a human, we use the step of creation to make her a human. 
But she died as a human and the Winter Man goes straight to winter. Pietro, I feel like Pietro will die with a heart attack. Because I just feel like he's going to die with a damn heart attack in Volume 9. I that, that, That's just me. And Pietro is also the one person that we know who could do repair and everything like that. And it would be perfect fitting for him to be part of the part of the team. Plus, he could be the father figure of the group. Because not only he would be the repairman of Kriffman, he would be the father figure to everyone because it it would be similar to Lee in The Walking Dead and also um, Herschel. Pretty much mix as Lee and Herschel because, for God's sake, the, the character has been voiced by the man who voiced Lee in The Walking Dead. Telltale game. And it makes perfect sense. And I did not notice when I rewatched it and I recognized his voice. I was an idiot because his voice so so Lee and I love it. And I I would love to have him in the zombie positive steam as a whole. And the next one we have um Moro Booster, if I said that right. And that is a uh, son. I'm I'm gonna have to add my boy son. I feel like son will be done sure that his best friend Neptune died. Cause Neptune is like the will be the last teammate that he has in the Zombie Apocalypse team. And Sun will be the last remainder of his own. But he still have people. And Sun's semblance is also quite useful and plus his sk his skill is really fucking useful. He's really good with hand to hand combat. With his weapons, plus he can use freaking nunchuck on the bow at the same fucking time. Plus, oh sorry. Plus, he's also cool. He's actually one of my favorite characters out of Team Sun in general. And find out more of him in the the book. I just want to know more about his origin as a whole. But I hope we do get to see Sun again in Volume Nine after we just saw him in Neptune in Volume Eight. But I'm glad we might get to see him and the others again. It will be similar to Volume 2 and 3, but minus John, the Team Ruby, so yeah. The person to be on the lookout is definitely Ilya. I have to have a Faunus in this group. And her semblance is fucking useful for when it comes to stealth. And she is the perfect fit to be at the lookout because she is a chameleon Faunus. And she has the ability to turn to colors of her emotion and turn to invisible is that she sees fit. She is a perfect candidate to be uh to be on the lookout as a whole. And plus, it's kinda of sad we're not gonna see her anymore after since we saw her last in volume six. No wait, we actually do get to see her again in volume eight, my bad. That's the only time we actually do get to see her and who knows, we might get to see her again in volume nine. We honestly do not know. But it's kinda of sad that we had to wait until twenty twenty two because ugh, I don't want to wait another two years. They might as well just do it volume now way, way earlier. That, But that's just me as a whole. But I feel like Ilya needs more love and attention. So pretty much I will add her in into this list. The next one on this list is a lovable person. And that is I'm adding Velvet, one of the members of Team Coffee. I love Velvet. I She is so cute and adorable. And... She's just a lovable in the Team Coffee. And, well, she's also lovable right next to uh, uh, Yahahashi, uh, Yahahashi. I think I say his name right. I forget how you say his name, but she's also a lovable character, and I love her. She, to be honest, she's a lovable, cute, and also thick. And also, she's pretty fucking badass. She's not a pushover. She could analyze everybody's fighting skill as her own. Like, dude, if you saw her in Volume 3, she could do similar fine sound like the other characters. And that is impressive. And that would be awesome. I, I just love her as a whole. And I'm glad we're going to get to see her in Volume 9. Because he, seeing her, reading about her from both of the books, I actually do love her. And I'm just glad we get to see her again. I hope they have a new suit, a new outfit design to make it look good. But... I'm just glad. I, I just love her as a whole. So I need to add another Faunus. So I gotta add the, my bunny girl waifu velvet and then this list. The next one is... Oh god, I'm gonna get so much crow hate. 
self sacrifice. Yeah, Crow will be the one will be to do the sacrifice. And I don't want to go into details why. Because let's be honest, if you guys could guess who the team leader is, you pretty much could guess why he would sacrifice himself. And I feel like Crow would be the type of person who would sacrifice himself as a character if he needs to or whenever he wants to. If he feels like that his niece is all grown old to be in their own person, then his time of living has come to an end. And after the shit he's been through, like, for fuck's sake, got poisoned, uh, got betrayed, um, uh, what else? And also, uh, got his best friend, or his closest friend, got killed by Tyrion by his own blade, and also seek out vengeance to Ironwood, and he, he's been through shit. If y'all think about it. And I just felt bad for him. So I definitely see Crow to make a self-sacrifice if he needs to. Plus his semblance might cause a bad luck to the group. And also, I was planning to put him as a lookout because of his transformation to a Crow. But that would be a bad idea because people will try to kill Crow as a bird form. But that's just me. Up next is a Speed Fighter at, at Neapolitan. I put her on this list because I know a lot of people love Neo. I do too until I find out about her origin. That Neopolitan is not her actual real name. And the one that was kid And now we find out why she doesn't speak. Because she was born without able to speak. Which is kind of fucking sad honestly. And I feel like Neo would not trust whoever is the team leader. As a whole, it depends who is a perfect candidate to be the leader. So, yes, Neo is actually a skill as a fighter, and she's no pushover. And she's also the, I guess she's also the fastest. Guys, hey, she just went, just whooped the entire Team Jennifer's ass. And, well, Team Jennifer, what I mean is with Oscar. And also beat Yang in 1v1. And that was fucking impressive. Hell, she has just squared against Cinder as a fall maiden, for God's sake. And it makes and she is quick as a fighter, so I put her on this list as a whole. Next on the list is Medic, and the only person I can see who is the Medic is definitely John because of his semblance. He could give his aura to other people so they can have the actual aura back. And now that John is also well. A skilled fighter, but not fully. He's just more of a using his sword and shield, and also got his gadget or whatever thing in Atlas. So yeah, John will be perfect for kind of different medic, to because of his semblance as a whole. And John, I just don't understand why people hated him. All I hear is bitching about people saying they hate John because of the voice actor. They hate the voice actor. They do not like him because. When they heard that thing, he's just a complete asshole. He doesn't care about anyone for himself. So they had to hate John. Because John is voiced by the person that they hate. Which is fucking ret retarded and childish. You could hate the voice out there, but don't blame the character for fuck's sake. But yeah, I put John on this list because I actually do love John as a character. I just love how far he has became, become a warrior that Piero wants him to be. And finally to, you know, following Pyrrha's footsteps to be a huntsman that Pyrrha wants to be. And John has been grown as a character and it just means a lot to me as a whole. And the one thing I will never never get get out of my mind is the decision that he made to kill Penny because Penny asked for requests. And John had to struggle with that. And now he's going to go through another... A trauma and a PTSD, not only lost a Pyrrha, but also had to make uh, the great sacrifice to kill Penny for the sake for the Winter Man and not go into the wrong hand. And he has to kill an actual person who is actually his friend. And it's just holy fucking hell! Like damn, I you could feel bad for John. I really fucking do. But yeah. Next on the list, we're on the top. We're on the three of the last of the list, and that is brains. And I chose Watts. This man is good with tech. 
I just don't see anyone else who is good and smart when it comes to tech. And other than that, he's also uh, he's also a craftsman and repairer as well. So that's also handy. And other than he's also good with you know learn to the hack or think of a strategy and think of a plan before going to action. So he is the perfect candidate to um for this since he's the only one who is smartest. I honestly do not know who else is the smartest besides just him. So, yeah. So I add uh, Watts to this list. Because why the hell not? Just for the hell of it. Next up is the Brawler. And it's definitely got to be fucking Hazel. My boy, Hazel. This man went down like a fucking G. And been becoming like a fucking beast. When he fought um, Salem in Volume 8. And see how his semblance is when we saw in Volume 5 that he could use any dust and on him and use it like a... Pretty much he's a walking tank. And to, pretty much he can go hand-to-hand -hand combat without the dust unless he needs to. And holy shit, this man is a one-man army. And this is insane. And to be honest, I definitely could see Hazel be the, the protector of pretty much... Anyone as a whole. He would be like a, a brother. A big brother to everyone. Because well if you think about. If you think about it because. Um, Hazel lost his sister. And he doesn't want to see any children get killed. Or even far worse. I feel like Hazel will be the protector of the children. Of whoever's in the group. So yeah. That's just me. And I just love Hazel. I, it's kind of suck that he died like a G, but in a good way. A lot of people say that Hazel is a liar, but no. He he is not. You don't see his body. His body has been disintegrated because thanks to the being burned along with Salem, almost get choked to death, and Oscar used the magic from Osman's cane to shoot the freaking magic beam out of it. Yeah. There's no way hell Hazel could survive those three encounters. There's no way in hell. The ore are not that OP to make you survive that kind of explosion as a whole. And you could debunk that shit. Last but not least, and you guys should have guessed this by now, the team leaders definitely had to be Ruby. And of course, I had to make my girl, my waifu, the best girl in the entire Ruby, as the team leader of this Azami Pocket. I, I don't care what people say. I love Ruby so much to death. I don't give a fuck. And she she's a perfect fitting. And they gave her development in Volume A that she struggled of the decision that she's willing to make. And just imagine her struggle when it comes to surviving in the apocalypse. Just imagine that for a second. And it's just, holy fuck. I'm just, I don't know what to say. I just love Ruby. I love her as a whole. I love how they gave her new look for Volume uh, seven, yeah, volume seven, and uh, develop her even more. And I just can't wait how they're going to develop her for volume nine when she finds out that P Penny died because John asked her because John did it because Pira asked, not Pira, Penny asked, and the Winter Maidens go straight to Winter, which which we would be glad to hear that the Winter Maiden is in the right hands. And that Penny has died as a human. So pretty much Ruby would be breaking down and be like, so we made her into a human for nothing. So, I mean, they did, but they would not expect that she would die. But, yeah. And this is not going to be pretty. I can tell Ruby's going to be even more struggle, depressed, trauma again. And, oh boy. I I just I just want to see volume eight. Not, I mean volume nine. Damn it! Give us volume nine way early, god damn it! Jeez. So yeah, those are my uh my Ruby Zombie Apocalypse team, and these are just my opinion about the team as a whole. And also, guys, let me know your thoughts and your opinions down below. Tell me what you guys think. What is your Ruby Zombie Apocalypse team, and who should be the first person to die, and who should be the one to self sacrifice? And also, who is the team leader of your team when it comes to zombie apocalypse? And this is just my opinion, and as a whole. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, share, subscribe. 
Links to my social medias and my other channels will be down below. So you guys know the drill. Again, like, comment, share, subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. As always, keep moving forward. Mm -hmm.